Hello, and welcome to the second webinar for the Young Pacific Leaders Small Grants Program. My name is Phoebe Hybeck, and I am a Program Development Officer on the Program Development Team at Cultural Vistas, supporting the YPL Small Grants Program. The YPL Small Grants Program is an opportunity for alumni of the Young Pacific Leaders Conference to apply for YPL Small Grant funding for a project they want to implement in the Pacific region. To help alumni prepare to apply for the YPL Small Grants Program, Cultural Vistas is hosting preparatory webinars to provide additional information that helps teams with their project proposals. The first webinar took place on May 26, 2021, and was focused on developing and submitting a grant proposal. This second webinar is intended to help interested teams better understand the role of each core team member and provide a few different tips for you to consider while you're organizing your project and your project team. So with that, Let's hop right in. On the screen, you'll find a program timeline. This timeline outlines for you the remaining webinar dates and the program-related dates you'll need to be aware of. You'll see we have the final webinar next week on June 9th, 2021, and we'll be covering budgeting. Many of you have a lot of budget questions and we'll be able to answer those then. Again, that webinar is scheduled for June 9th, 2021 at nine o'clock a.m. New Zealand time, and you'll access that meeting using the same Zoom meeting access information you use to connect to webinar one and today. Another incredibly important date to note for you all is the application deadline. That deadline is June 15th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. New Zealand time. As I shared, today we're going to discuss organizing a team. With the YPL Small Grant Program, it is required that each proposed project include a project leader, a project treasurer, and a project secretary. These members are deemed the core team members. They are the key supporting members of the project and those who ensure the project is in line to meet the proposed goals. Three core team members are required because this truly helps to support your project and make the proposal submission stronger if you are selected to implement a small grant. The three core team members also help to delineate responsibilities across the project. To submit a proposal, the team must meet the following eligibility requirements. At least one core team member must be a former YPL conference attendee. That includes the most recent 2020 YPL conference, the 2019 conference, the 2018 conference, the 2016 conference, the 2015 conference, the 2014 conference, and the 2013 conference. So anyone who attended any of the YPL conferences that have been held thus far are eligible to apply. All core team members must be between the ages of 20 to 35 and possess citizenship from a YPL member country. U.S. citizens must demonstrate that their project idea is Pacific regionally focused outside of the United States and have an exchange component within the region or be a part of a cross-country team. The project must also address at least one of the YPL, one of the following YPL pillars. This includes education, environment and resource management, civic leadership, and economic and social development. Unfortunately, previous YPL small grant program core team members, including the project leaders, project treasurers, and project secretaries are ineligible to reply. As I mentioned, for your proposal to be eligible for funding, one of the core team members is required to be a YPL alumni, meaning someone on your core team must have previously attended a YPL conference. Not all core team members have to be a YPL alumni, just one member of the core team. This can be any of the core team member roles. I'd also like to note that there can be more than one YPL alumni on a team as well. There are no restrictions on this. As you're putting together your project proposals, especially your core team, it's incredibly important to understand the roles, responsibilities, and requirements of each specific core team member. And that begins with the project leader. The project leader is the person who holds the overall responsibility for the successful initiation, planning, design, execution, monitoring, and closure of the YPL Small Grants Program. 
So the entire implementation of the project. The project leader is the head of the project implementation and will help to delineate responsibilities to other members of the project, especially the other core team members. The project leader helps to manage and guide the team through the different phases of the project as they are developed and implemented. The project leader is truly the go-to person for the project and will need to be the most flexible of the three core team members, given that they have to step in at certain times to help ensure all phases of the project are moving in accordance with the set out work plan. The project leader is the leader of those supporting and working on the project. This leader must be open and focused on achieving the goals for the project in consultation with the other core team members. It's very important for the project teams to work collaboratively together towards the project goals with each core team member having their set specific goals and responsibilities. And the project leader helps to set these and ensure that the team is working in harmony. As the core team, and more specifically the project leader, you must try to build a team that works together with common aims, all working towards that same final goal. One of the biggest pieces of the project leader's role is clear and open communication. As projects are developed, selected, and implemented, communication is the key to ensuring the project's success. It is important that the core team operate harmoniously as the project can only be successful with the work of all members in their respective roles. Often the project leader is the guide and the force behind ensuring open communication among team members is present. Another level of communication required of the project leader is to the funder or the overall grant program manager. In the case of the YPL Small Grants Program, that will be Cultural Vistas. Project leaders are expected to keep Cultural Vistas up to date on major project updates and issues, as well as provide project-related information as needed or requested by Cultural Vistas. Now to the treasurer. The project treasurer handles all finances of the YPL Small Grant Project. This includes receiving the grant funds, budget tracking, budget management, and providing overall budget updates. The treasurer must be able to receive YPL small grant fund transfers to their bank account from a US bank account. It is required that upon project selection, the project treasurer will need to provide their banking information for the transfers of funds to be dispersed to the project. Throughout the implementation period, the treasurer will be instrumental in project budgeting and budget tracking. This helps to ensure the expenses are in line with the approved budget. The project treasurer should continue to keep track, fun track of funds and expenses, as well as have an organized system for logging receipts of related project purchases throughout the full project implementation period. The project treasurer also needs to provide budget updates, including a narrative and the receipts to the project secretary for the required reports due to cultural vistas throughout the implementation period. It is imperative that this person is trustworthy, organized, and reliable. The YPL small grant project funds will be dispersed in three separate intervals throughout the program at percentages of 60%, at the beginning of the implementation phase, 35% at the time of the midterm report, and then the remaining 5% of funds will be dispersed after the submission of the final project report. Again, the person acting as the project treasurer should be trustworthy, organized, and must have a bank account to receive the funds. As well, this person should be prepared to track expenses and can keep a detailed log of program receipts. Last of the core team members, but certainly not least, the project team secretary. The project secretary will compile all monthly, midterm, and final reports, submitting those reports with the provided instructions from Cultural Vistas. The project secretary's role also includes managing communications like the project narratives, photo documentation, and social media engagement. The person in this role will also communicate project updates to Cultural Vistas often. Failure to provide up-to-date information on the status of a project 
and the required reports in a timely fashion could result in a loss of funding for the project. While you're putting together the project proposal, it's incredibly important to consider your team and the responsibilities associated with each role, as well as the skills and time commitment needed to fulfill them. A synchronized and reliable team helps to ensure smooth and successful project implementation. It also provides a strong system for supporting the project as you work to reach the set out goals. In all the roles within the team, it is important to maintain clear and open communication. Each core team member should ensure that the other core team members know what is going on with the project, especially when it comes to project objectives, project delays, or issues, as these will affect all three core team members and the responsibilities they are required to fulfill. Now that you know more about each role and the responsibilities associated with that role, here are some things to consider while you're putting together your team. The method of communication. What methods work best for those who are taking on a core team member role? Additionally, it's important to think through what other team capacity you will need. For example, if it is an exchange program or a workshop, you may need volunteers. Spelling out who will be responsible for those types of project pieces is incredibly important as you're developing your project proposal and working through your work plan. Scheduling and time commitment. While six months is not a long time in terms of project implementation, it's important to remember that thinking about the scale of your project, six months can be a long time in terms of commitment. This meaning the commitment of team members, especially those balancing work or school commitments, on top of the YPL small grant project. It's imperative that those signing on to the project commit the time needed to implement and fulfill the full project requirements throughout the program's entirety. The larger time commitments in regard to the YPL small grant program are the kickoff workshop to help selected teams digest the information, understand YPL small grants program requirements further, and have the opportunity to refine the project, make final budget adjustments, and get feedback on the projects. All three core team members are required to attend a virtual kickoff workshop via Zoom over the dates July 24th through 25th, 2021. So again, if your project is selected, all three core team members are required to attend the virtual kickoff workshop. All programming and expenses for this workshop will be covered by the YPL program and arranged by Cultural Vistas. You do not need to budget for this expense in your project proposal. So again, you don't need to include this expense in your project proposal. You do, however, need to plan to attend if your project is selected. The second is the debriefing seminar. At the conclusion of the YPL Small Grants Program, a debriefing seminar will be held over four days where all core team members will be asked to represent the project and share the successes, challenges, highlights of the past six months of project implementation. This is projected for February 2022 in Auckland, New Zealand. And as I noted above with the YPL kickoff workshop, all program expenses for the debriefing seminar will be covered by YPL and arranged by Cultural Vistas you also do not need to budget for this in your project proposal. And again, this is a requirement for all three core team members. For more information on the team and program requirements, please visit culturalvistas.org slash YPL. This is where you'll also be able to access the application. Now that you have a better idea of the roles, before we move on to questions, here are a few things to consider. It's important to put a great deal of thought into your project team members and be sure to understand the commitment each team member is making when accepting the role of a core team member. For those proposals that are planning a project across countries or nations or Pacific territories, keep in mind the differing time zones, currencies, cultural traditions and practices, and the preferred and accessible methods of communication. 
It's also helpful to ensure that you have a clarified process and activities that will lead the project's outputs and deliverables while you're thinking through your work plan. Developing a work plan that provides you with information that enables your team to estimate properly the budget and resources you need, as well as define a project goals and scope is imperative. This will help you visualize the entire project and see the interdependencies between the project responsibilities and each team member's role. This will also help to show the task breakdown across core team members and other supporting team members, as well as how to forecast resource requirements within the funding disbursement timeline. One thing to note, and we'll discuss this further in the following webinar focused on budgeting, but funding disbursement, you need to make sure that it matches your timeline. So as I shared, that will happen in three different transfers. The first, after the kickoff workshop for those selected to participate in the program, the second at the midterm report, and the third at the final report. Another thing to think about is monitoring and evaluation. How will you be tracking the project pieces and what methods work best for your team to evaluate your successes is very helpful when it comes to reporting and monitoring and evaluation. You should think through the different monitoring and evaluation methods for tracking your project progress. How will you indicate and measure achieved milestones? As well, sustainability is another important piece to think about as you're putting together your proposal. What is your plan for longer term project sustainability? Social media is a great tool for outward public facing communication strategies that also help support long term sustainability and to attract potential funders. Another incredibly important thing to think about as you're putting together your project team, as well as your project proposal is to plan for the unexpected. Do you have a backup plan for various components of your project? This is something you should be thinking about as you put your project together. And you also need to be thinking about what resources you would need to support that backup plan. It's important to not only think about the required pieces of the project proposal, but those additional pieces that will occur after the implementation begins if your project is selected to participate in the program. We mention this now because the proposal is setting the scene for the project implementation period. So now on to Q&A. Here are a few questions we've received from the program inbox that we'd like to outline for you. If you have any additional questions, please contact us at yplgrants at culturalvistas.org. The first question we received is, are you allowed to use a partner with or partner with an outside standing organization. Yes, you are allowed to partner with an outside organization on your project. In terms of funding, this would be noted as a cost share on your project budget. We encourage collaborating with any stakeholder that makes your project su successful, but we also encourage you to be mindful of the parameters of that partnership. Another question we received is, are the rules regarding, what are the rules regarding government collaboration? As long as it's tied to the theme of YPL, or the YPL theme, excuse me, of civic leadership, that's okay. However, you have to be incredibly careful to make sure the project is not funding any government agencies or political activity. A question we've received is, can the grant be used to create a service that would be crucial to the social economic development of the region. Providing a service to your community would definitely be eligible for funding. That is definitely something that is possible. Another question we've received is, can all three core team members be YPL 2021 alumni? For sure, the requirement for the core team members is that only one has to be a YPL alumni, but is it, it is acceptable for two or three YPL alumni to be a part of a core member team. Can you be on more than one core team member is a question we've received. And the answer to that question is no. YPL alumni are only able to be listed on one core team. So that is only one core team, one project. 
Another question we've gotten is, can other team members not in the core group be outside of the ages 20 to 35? Yes, that is not a problem. We do not require any information on those additional team members other than the number of volunteers, project team members that you have supporting your project. This is outlined once projects are selected in the reports that the project secretary will compile. Additional question we've received is, describe, can you please describe the team's previous involvement with YPL program? What does this mean? This is the section in the application where you'll need to indicate the participation in YPL programs from those of your core team members. So sharing what YPL conference, the core team member that is the YPL alumni on your team, what conference they attended or what YPL programs they've additionally participated in. One or more of my core team members have expired passports. Is it possible to submit their current expired passport in the application and send the renewed passports once obtained? So this is a question we've received quite a bit. Yes, we ask that you please note this in your application. You will need to include the documentation um, outlining that the renewal process or the application process for the passport is in process and then you'll need to provide the obtained passport to cultural vistas if your project is selected. This will be required by the acceptance of the selection of the project. Another question we've received is where there'll be, will there be a specific quota for the four YPL pillars to be represented? No, we want all, or excuse me, no, we want to have representation of all of the pillars but the application criteria mentioned are the most important. So your project can touch more than one of the YPL pillars. Um, however, it is not required. One of the things that is required is that it does have to at least represent one of the YPL pillars. We've had a question asking what the project should produce. Projects do not have to be a product, or excuse me, projects do not have to produce a project. They can be a training or a workshop, for example. However, you do need to be able to describe the impact of the project, the direct effect on the community or audience that you're working to support. So if you do do a training or a workshop, describing in your proposal what the participants will be learning and any post-workshop activities that further the impact of the small grant project. Another question we received is, received is if the project falls in between all four pillars, do we indicate that in the application or choose only one? On the application, you may select all the pillars that your project represents. The project is again, not limited to solely one YPL pillar. If it represents more than one YPL pillar, you're welcome to select all of the pillars that your project supports. And finally, the last question we've received is what do I need to consider when making purchases for the grant? And what about large durable items? So for purchasing larger durable items, as well as making purchases for the grant and compiling your budget to include in your proposal application, project teams need to do the due diligence, meaning that they demonstrate expenses are cost effective and are required for the project's success. So an example of this is not just picking your favorite airline to fly on if you have a project that requires travel, but making sure that you compare cost and go with a reasonable or average priced expense and include that quotation in your project proposal. So we've come to the last of our questions for the, today. One of the things that I wanted to note is that for any of you who have questions that come up after the conclusion of the webinar or as you're reviewing the recording, please feel free to send those to YPL Grants at Cultural Vistas, and we'll be sure to address them in the following week's webinar. Don't forget to tune in to the next week's webinar. It's the third and final webinar, Budget Creation and Project Management. It will be hosted at the same time, at the same place, so 9 o'clock a.m. New Zealand time on Tuesday, June 9th, 2021 via Zoom, using the same Zoom access information that you use to join webinar one and webinar two. 
So we hope to see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining and we look forward to speaking with you soon.